come back to my channel. Give me one second. I don't want it to move, but I want it to be in like a... That would do. Hello, welcome back to my channel. Welcome to a new video. I don't really do sit down videos. I'm going to explain quickly now. I am more sticking to vlogs for my channel because that's what I really enjoy to do. And also, let's be real, I'm really behind on my vlogs at the moment. And it's just going to be... And I like, But I like to do the weekly vlogs still, so I'm just mainly focusing on that with a few sit down videos sprinkled in instead of me just trying to force sit down videos I think when I'm out of uni I might get back into doing these sit down videos and just chatting I am definitely planning for like when I'm out of uni to do, do a full sit down video and advice for things like move like student housing and masters and degrees and stuff um and maybe during the year I might still do that but right now I think vlogs are more my thing it gives I can just I can just click the computer pick up the camera and film a clip when I can and then put the camera down and get on with what I need to get done but I am filming this on a day I'm having off doing uni work I submitted my essay yesterday which was during today and I told myself I was going to give today but myself to give myself today off okay I haven't had any coffee yet so one sec before we get into this video, because it's going to be a chatty video, and I don't want my battery to die or anything, I'm going to move back a little bit because I feel like you're going to see me. Um, for this video, I am actually doing... What am I talking about? Before we get into the video, can we just do the one big thing? I like, you know, Thumbs up, comment down below, please subscribe, follow my socials, links in the description, and also that will pop up here. Please follow my TikTok because I do... I am getting into posting a lot on there now. Um... And without further ado, let's just get on with the video. So, if you haven't guessed by the title for this video, I am doing a Q&A. Oh, I'm just going to turn my TV off because it's distracting. Um, I'm doing a q and I'm also not, like, dressed up. I'm literally just chilling. Um, I got a long woke up, to be fair. And I just thought I'd do it now. to get it, Not to get it out of the way, because I wanted to film, but I just didn't really want to do the whole dressing up. I kind of wanted to be cosy. I'm literally in my uni hoodie and my pyjama bottoms and I'm drinking a cup of coffee that tastes like it has no sugar in it. I'm pretty sure I put sugar in it, like, I don't remember but I'm pretty sure I did. Um, and I asked for questions on my Instagram and I thought I would just answer them for you guys whilst drinking coffee and dropping my phone on the floor. This has been happening a lot, I'm pretty sure I can't hold things without dropping things recently. So, my first question is... Have you cons ever considered virtual dating during lockdown? I will be honest with you, probably not. I mean, I wouldn't say no to it if, like, the right person came around. Like, I, well, I'm still on Tinder. To be fair, in the first lockdown, I went home and I didn't really have to go on Tinder that much when I was at home because, one, it doesn't let me do it on the internet, so I have to put my 4G on all the time and it's really, really annoyed because I just can't afford to keep doing it. Second of all, I don't I genuinely do not have the effort just did not have the effort hello. um I do not have the effort um to didn't have the effort to go through Tinder World like I one most people in my area I already know or there's not people I'm interested in um and I just couldn't go to go Tinder World back home because I was like we're in lockdown there isn't much I'm gonna do I'm not gonna go meeting people so I just didn't bother um, with this lockdown, I mean, obviously still not meeting people, but I, I'm in Portsmouth, so I was like, why not? So I'm on Tinder, but if, like, a person who I felt like I actually could have a conversation with, and, it, and a normal conversation with, came around, and maybe I would virtually date. Um, I think if I mean virtually date, like, Skyping and like, FaceTime, like, I probably would if it was the right person to talk to. Like, not say the right person to be with, but, like, you know, when you're on Tinder, you get, like, all, you don't always get people you can have a full-on conversation with. I mean, if there was any guy in the real world who wanted to hit me up, who knows me, go for it. Next question is, if you could redo any year at uni, which would it be and why? I think it would be my first year. Like, don't get me wrong, my final year was probably one of my favourite years, even though it was stressful when a lockdown happened. So I probably... It's either first, third year, it'll be either final year because I'll get the chance to actually do final year again and finish it completely properly, unlike I did this year. But I think probably first year. First year was my favourite year. It was the year I thought I was going to hate because I was away from home and I 
was never I never I was never used to living away from home if that makes sense like I loved being at home I was a very antisocial person back before I came to uni and I gained my confidence by coming to uni so at first year I just had so much fun went out a lot like a lot like I drank way too much that year I'm pretty sure my liver did not like me that year so I'm um so I'd probably do first year again because it was really fun and really chill and I met some of my I met some of my friends who I don't really speak to anymore and I met some really good friends my like two of my best friends in that year like we've been best friends since like the January of we met I, I basically hung out started hanging out with them for the January of first year and ever since then we're like been best friends and I love them so much and I couldn't actually imagine my life without them in it so first year probably okay next question is where would you where would be your number one place to travel Okay, it is tip, it's difficult to choose because I haven't really travelled anywhere. I haven't really gone to many places, so there's so many places I want to. I think I'd probably say either New York is a big, big one on my bucket list. Um, honestly, I would literally go there in a heartbeat. If someone says to me, to me tomorrow, I'm taking you to New York, no matter, what, like, forget about coronavirus, I'm taking you there. I'd be like, okay, I'm there. Obviously, I know right now we can't go away, and it's not going to happen. And I'm not going to be travelling for a long time anyway. Um, or it would be Australia. I think it's just Australia is one of those places that it's scary to travel for 24 hours. It's a scary place to go in some ways. There's spiders that I don't want to see there apparently. But I think it's one of those places I really want to visit. I just want to get the chance to go around. And it's more, I think after seeing Beauty Spectrum or okay, Molly's... Um, you ch um, like her travel journey from the like, beginning of the year when she went to Australia it made me really want to go I thought it'd be a really like fun place to visit and well not fun, and also a nice place to visit like the like, iconic places and just see it what's been your favourite thing about your masters um I would have to say meeting new people because it's really hard these days now to meet people when you're uni course if you're doing online luckily for me we've had in class and online stuff and i have made a group of friends who i actually really get on with like they're really nice people and i'm very glad that i have made these friends um this year so i think that's probably my favorite thing about my masters and also i'll say another thing is i only we've only been there for like six weeks and I have learnt so much more in six weeks than I did in three years of my undergrad. I mean, I remember stuff from my undergrad, but, like, barely. But, like, this stuff is more, like, I guess, solely focused on what I want to do. So it's making me more, like, it means it's, like, more enjoyable. So I'm actually enjoying my course and like, the content I'm learning compared to what I was doing in my undergrad. Like, don't get me wrong, I did like my undergrad, but it was a bit too, like, it was so generic about business stuff that I got a bit, like... It got a bit boring towards the end that like, I don't remember much what I learnt in the three years, if that makes sense. Next question is, other than uni work, what do you do to keep yourself busy, to keep busy during lockdown? I play Animal Crossing, to be fair, that was last lockdown. This looks like I haven't really played on Animal Crossing that much because I have been just doing uni work or I've been um, watching a lot of Netflix Um and been filming TikToks, getting very distracted filming TikToks and on TikTok. Um, I've been finding that days have been going quick for me, but lockdown's only been on for a week when I'm filming this, and the only thing I did that's different to being at home was on Monday, I had, not Monday, Friday, I, last Friday I had a photo shoot with my best friend in Victoria Park, and it was really nice. <gasps> Hiccups. And it was really nice. I'm hoping the weather will be okay next week so that we can do photo shoots again. Another photo shoot. Um, I also like go do Skype calls and FaceTimes with my friends and just calling my friends because, like, the thing I find about lockdown, the hardest thing I find about your lockdown is not seeing my friends. Like me, I got luckily got my housemates who I get on really well with, but like obviously I've got my close friends who I don't get to see. So calling them, keeping up with them, like is something I find is another way to keep myself busy and it's also my way to distract myself from uni work. But most this week and since lockdown started, I've had an essay deadline, so I've been focusing on that. 
a lot. I literally got it done yesterday because I focused on it a lot. But I was the thing is, I was also hungover on Tuesday because I got drunk on the night before. Um, last lockdown, I did spend a lot of time playing Animal Crossing. That kept me busy during lockdown when I wasn't doing uni work or when I should have been doing uni work. But also, I've been watching like so. I'm finding this is the perfect time to rewatch shows. Instead of watching new shows, I've been finding it the perfect time to rewatch shows that I loved before. And I am currently, I might as well show it because it's here, currently watching Pretty Little Liars. Um, re watching it because I absolutely love it. And I bought the Vampire Diaries DVD box set as well. And it turned out today, but that won't be watched until I finish all of the, six, the seven seasons of. Is it seven seasons? Yeah, the seven seasons of Pretty Little Liars, so, you know, I am very excited. I'm only on the 11th episode of, 11th or 12th episode of season one, but we'll get there eventually. Um, next one is, how do you keep on track with the uni deadlines? Um, it's a good one. Um, I don't know, because I don't really, I write down when they're due in, so I know when it's coming up, and I have... A group chat I don't really forget it we forget because they talk about it a lot but when it comes to me is I can't start writing things until it gets closer to the deadline because that's when I start getting stressed I don't know what it is I said to myself about this one I had during this week I was gonna start it like three weeks ago and I didn't I started it at the weekend because that was just like I don't know this is it was just something I can do I don't know what it is but I think the urge of necessarily needing to get it done gets it in my head that I need to do it and focus on it but when I know it's got time I'm like oh it's fine if I don't do it today then it's not like it's gonna be a bad thing but I think it doesn't help that I have like when this week was reading week so I literally had no seminar prep to do but before I've had seminar prep to do before classes that I just don't have time to then focus on the coursework at the same time but I usually like, the way I try and manage it is I try to give myself a time, I'll start it at a time and then give myself a break and then I'll start again. Most of the time I don't listen to that rule I have but that's how I try to keep track of it is by giving myself times. Depending on the essay I figure out how much time I actually need to write it. Um, but it's really bad for me to keep, I'm not the best at keeping track on uni work. I like to get myself stressed out for some unknown reason. Um, you would think as a uni student I wouldn't want to get myself stressed out, but here I am enjoying myself getting stressed out. I have a deadline next Friday and I've like told myself today I can have it off, today off when I could just start it, you know. Next one is, any advice on getting better at self-love? This has literally been my thing this year, is learning to love myself. And I am very grateful that this year I have. So if you saw my videos like a year ago, I probably, you probably thought I was happy, but I wasn't. I didn't love myself. I was very much like relying on my friends to make me happy. And if I wasn't around them, I'd be miserable. Couldn't enjoy my own company and I couldn't love myself at all. I just put myself down a lot and just, I, I got in a rut of it. Like, to my friends, I'd probably put on an act of fate, like, persona thinking I'm to make it seem like I'm happy. And, like, to be fair, all my friends who I'm close to now can don't have noticed that I wasn't. And it's, it is obviously, it's hard when they are your real friends to fake it. So, <laughs> but I was not a person who could deal with, like, I didn't love myself for ages. Like, I say absolute ages. To the point that now, over lockdown, it really helped me. And I think the biggest thing is to just take time to focus on yourself don't let other people get in the way but if you have to lock your phone away don't take away social media forget about it and just think of the qualities to let you love about yourself um focus on the things that make you happy and just like learn that it doesn't matter what other people think of you it's not that doesn't matter that's literally the pointless most pointless thing in the world is what you think of yourself I definitely recommend self um, self love books. That sounds so sad, but I do. Um, I've got three of them. I've got um, learn to uh, what's that one? Be your own best friend. Um, 
Woman Don't Owe You Pretty and Everything I Know About Love. Um, I haven't actually read that much of it, but like I got, I bought them when I was starting to like love myself anyway. And now I generally can be in my own company and be happy because I don't care. Like, start wearing things that you're comfortable in. Don't wear things that you think people would want to see you in. Whether that is like an oversized hoodie and joggers or a nice tight top and skinny jeans. Don't wear it because other people are going to say to you, you shouldn't be wearing that or it would be nice to see you in this. Or if someone tell, even if someone tells you you look fat in an outfit, don't listen to them and just wear the outfit because it's up to you what you wear and not up to anyone else. And as soon as you start like, um, listening to other people's opinions, that's it. My friend said something on a when she was TikTok live yet TikTok live yesterday, and it's really really good quote for self love. Don't take an opinion from someone you won't take advice from. And it is true because if you're not going to listen to their advice, why are you going to listen to the opinion they're going to give you? And most people in the world like to be judgmental, I'm not going to lie, and those people are not worth it. And don't get me wrong, I've had it a couple of times in the last week, people judging me for something so small and something so stupid, and I'm letting it get to me for a moment, but really you don't need to. Like, This is probably a really big shamble of rambles and not the best tips on self-love, but really just like, the, it's, there's... Um, if I can find quotes, I'll put it up somewhere. But there is, like, things that say... People say that, like, what is the point of loving someone else if you can't love yourself? Because you have to live with yourself. Other people don't have to live with you. Some people who will judge you, they see you for five minutes on the street, they will judge you and that'll be it. But that one five minutes that person judging you can really hit you for a long time, but you're the one living with yourself. They ain't. They're, not gonna, they're probably not going to see you again. And if they're your friends judging you, they're really not your real friends. Your real friends wouldn't care what you do, what you look like. You should be able to do whatever you want. And if you if that makes you happy, then that's all that matters. It doesn't matter what other people think. And if your friends, your so-called friends are saying you shouldn't do that, or they're like judging you for what you did or what you're wearing, then they're really not your real friends because real friends... Okay, first of all, quality has changed. If I continue what I'm saying, quality has changed, kind of angle has changed camera out of battery thought I might as well just continue filming on my phone because I can get the questions on my other phone because I charged it last night because smart me oh and my hair is caught to it though smart me decided to charge my old phone yesterday just in case this happened so back to what I was saying um about self-love before I go to the next questions is these people in your life will probably like Real friends will be happy, will support whatever you decide to wear, whatever you decide to do. They won't judge you for it. They will let you do it because they will know it is your life. You might put yourself in positions to make mistakes, to get hurt, but that's the whole point of life and whole point of growing. But real friends are also, no matter if they know you're making a mistake, but they're not, they're not going to judge you. They'll be there for you when it ends up crashing and burning because that's what real friends are for. They don't sit there and judge you for what you do. They don't sit there and go, well, this is not... You. They, they might be honest with you and say, this is what's going to happen, but they won't stop you from doing it because it's what it is. So, just remember, the thing about learning stuff, you can learn stuff... <coughs> tips to learn stuff like this. Forget, forget other people's opinions that you don't care about. Don't try and impress others is another thing. Like, the more you start to impress others, you know. Um... As much as it's nice to have your friends going, yay, you look great. If they don't, if you feel happy about it, it doesn't matter. Like, and the next thing I'm going to be, be honest with yourself. Literally be honest with yourself. It might be harsh, like, and cut out the bullshit. If you have to cut out friends, you have to cut out friends. But literally, be honest with yourself and just try and motivate yourself to feel good. Like, Get up and do something that's going to make you happy. Start, maybe you start a hobby that you've always wanted to start, but you've not started because you're scared people will judge you. Just try, just start the hobby, just do it. Start something you really want to enjoy, like maybe start a TikTok because that's what you want to do. It can boost self-confidence. I'll tell you something, so TikTok is something I never expected, but I feel like no matter what I look like, I can be like, look like trash and be on there. And I started YouTube at a point where I had no, I didn't love myself. I really hated myself, basically. I felt like trash. But I started it, and over the few years of me being on it, I have felt more confident, and I have grown in confidence. So 
I feel like just start that hobby you've always wanted to do and it will help. And just take time to focus yourself, listen to podcasts. There's lots of podcasts about like loving yourself and just helping you. Um, listen to podcasts, read books, maybe self-help books or even just normal books. Watch movies and I'll tell you something, they do help. And just take time for yourself because I feel like the reason people don't love themselves is because they're always on the go and they don't take any moment for themselves. And they're always, some people always put other people first before themselves. I think mean, that's, that's a nice trait. And I used to be like that a lot. And I still am in some ways, but you've got to have that balance of where you put yourself first as well. Because in all honesty, what's going to happen? Say that friend of yours you put first gets in a relationship, gets married, has kids. If they can't focus on you completely, then, then what? While you put all your effort into them for the drop of things for them, what are they, you got to let them know what they can't do it back? Put the balance in loving yourself and putting yourself first because you are the person you've got to live with, not that person, not that friend. As much as they are your friends and they are important to you, that is fine. But put yourself first because that is probably the most important. Okay, I'm going to move on to the next question because I think I've rambled on about that a bit a lot. The next one is what's What are you most happy about right now? Um, that's a good question. Also, I really didn't realise the quality of the video in this camera. I don't like the sound, but still. Um, what am I most happy about right now? Uh, probably that I'm learning something I really enjoy. I have made friends with this course really easily. Um, I am loving myself right now. I feel very happy with where I am right now. Like, like I said, I am really, I'm literally like, the happiest I have been in myself for t- in 24 years. So I don't remember the last time I was this like happy and confident in myself. Um, I probably last time I was was when I was in primary school. I had all the confidence in the world. I used to believe I should have been that person on the stage singing the solos in the school productions. I never got it. Always believed I was. But now I'm just like, I'm back at that confident self, if that makes sense. And I'm kind of really happy I made it back there. Not to the point I'm too cocky like I'm... But I'm much more confident in myself and I believe in myself a lot more. And I will wear things I probably never would have worn. What I'm really happy about is I'm finally slowly finding my style. Slowly. And I'm really enjoying it. Like, I'm really enjoying trying new outfits, trying to feel comfortable in different things and seeing what I feel happy in. Um, And I'm just really happy with where I am in life because... Back when I was 16, I used to believe at 24, I'd probably be thinking, I'm going to get married soon. I'll probably be, like, in a happy relationship and with, like, kids. And don't get me wrong, I still want that in life. Maybe not right now. I've really, I started to learn, really realise how I don't really want to be in a relationship right now. I really don't think I can handle the whole being in a relationship right now whilst trying to do my master's. I really just want to get a good grade in my master's, get, get, hopefully get a good job. I know it's not easy, but hopefully get a good job and then maybe meet someone and settle down and all that lot. But, like, I'm in the right place where I want to be and I'm really happy with that because when I was 16, if I said, if 16-year-old me saw me now, they would probably, be probably thinking, what the hell are you doing with your life? Because at 16, I also said I would never go to uni and here I am at uni and doing my master's. So my 16-year-old self will probably think, what on earth are you doing? So... Next one is hoes before bros, 100%. I would choose my friends way before a guy. Like, yes, guys can give you sex and your friends can't give you sex. Let's be honest, but that doesn't mean I wouldn't choose my friends before them, before a guy, because... Sorry, my nose is running. Because a guy can easily, easily let you down, easily, and it's like one of those things, if they let you down, it means nothing. Unless they're your friends who are a guy, but then I still call part of the class and part of the hoes, not the bros. Um, a guy can easily let you down, and as much as, yes, it will hurt you, that's it. Bye-bye. Most of the time. <laughs> um, but... Your friends, if they let you down, it's a lot harder because you want to forgive them because they're your friends, but you've also got to, like, balance yourself out. If it makes sense, like, you've got to, like, you can't let yourself 
get hurt by that. And your friends are more likely and not are unlikely to let you down. They'll be right there for you throughout everything. Basically, the best thing to say is you could have a boyfriend. And the thing is, boyfriend. This is I've heard this somewhere. I think from the film or someone said it. Boyfriends come and go, but friends last a lifetime. And it is true. Boyfriends will come and go throughout your life, but your friends, your real friends, will last you your whole life. And you don't want to let that go for a fucking boy, because as soon as you let a boy come in between your friendships, that's when your friends are not going to want to be friends with you, because your friends are like, well, why am I going to be friends with someone who's not going to give me the time of day because they're in a relationship? Don't get me wrong, relationships are great. No, I never actually had a proper one, but not even the point of like your friends should still be at your top priority. Um, my favorite, favorite, favorite TV show is Sex and the City. I obsessed with it. I even did a whole video about it before lockdown happened. I think. Um, maybe I did it before I moved to this house. I don't remember. Um, but the thing about it is, there's this quote and it says maybe our friends are our soulmates. And boys are just people to um, have fun with, which is true. I believe that my friend, my my best friends are my soulmates more than a guy would ever be my soulmate. I might be married ten years, ten years down the road. I might be married to a guy who I absolutely love. I have kids with him, but I still will not call him. I might I might end up calling my soulmate. Who knows what I'll be like in like ten years time? But here's the thing: your best friends should be your soulmates, and this is the thing: your soulmate should become your best friend, if anything. And a real relationship, one that works. So much much better than other relationships are ones that become your best friend. Who, while you're dating, they become your best friend and they basically are exactly like your best friends to just give you bonuses. But it should always be your best, your friend before a guy. I really believe in that one because I wouldn't be where I am today without the support of my closest friends. So, yeah. my next question is, I feel like this is a really long Q&A, even though it's not even that many questions. I like to chat. Are there any benefits to going to uni? Yes. I definitely think there is drawbacks of going to uni. Um, because obviously certain things, like you're, it's, not, it's not your life gets put on hold, but you're, depending on when you go, like I started at 21, and obviously all my friends, are, like people I knew from home, had graduated by then, and they started their career. But I also think if you go, if you want, if you feel like it's, the benefits of it is you get a degree, like hence this certificate. Um, you get a degree. You can make. I bet it gets you out of your comfort zone because I'll tell you something. If you unless you're doing uni and you're travelling from home, most people will move to uni and it really does get you out of your comfort zone because you're like having to move away from home for the first time. You're having to like meet new people and you're just having to make friends you, you can't go through uni without making friends you can't sit in your room and not speak to someone you have to speak to someone so you're getting out of your comfort zone and i really think for, for me the benefit was that i got i grew my confidence because i coming to uni um sorry i was definitely put out of my comfort zone like there was times when i, I remember the first one was out of my comfort zone i went to show choir and i didn't i i made two friends at the beginning of the first one went to show choir and then they stopped coming after Christmas, and I was at this debate in my head, in my flat halls, room, in my room of halls, going, do I go to show choir, do I go to show choir and try and make friends with people, or do I just not go at all? And I thought my head, at that point, it was only £18, and I was like, do I, I paid £18 to what, not go? So I was like, go, you might make friends, and then I did, I started, I like, forced myself to talk to people, and I became friends with them, and I've been at show choir ever since, and... It's been the best three years of my life in show choir. I would say four, but we haven't done anything in show choir because we can't at the moment due to coronavirus. So thank you, thank you, COVID. But it's literally that got me out of my comfort zone because I had to force myself to talk to people who that's not what I would have been like before. I was a person before uni that I would just sit in my room and get on with my life, and that was what I was. So that's my benefit. So it gets you out of your comfort zone. You grow as a person and you're getting a degree, but it really depends on the person. And that leads me on to the next question, saying, would you recommend uni? Yes, I would recommend it personally because of my experience, but the one thing I do find, and this is what I found when I started uni, I watched loads of uni vlogs before I started uni because I was so nervous. 
to the point where I had expectations of what my uni experience should be like. Sorry. And then over the first year, I realised that everyone's uni experiences are different. So I would recommend it based on my experience. I loved it and it was the best thing for me. But I do know everyone's experience is different. And I have two things here to say. I would not recommend uni during a pandemic like now because no one's getting a full proper uni experience like I got when I first started. Um, then it can get complicated. And secondly, if you're thinking of doing a master's, wait till the pandemic is over because again, you're not get. You got to remember, even if you do a, a master's at the same uni as you were before, you were at before. Your friends, most of your friends are not going to be there, so you're going to have to make new friends. And luckily, I've had the opportunity to, but it's different for everyone. My friends' masters are all online. It's literally all online. And obviously now, we're going back into online teaching from the 30th of November for me. We love that. So it really depends. But I do recommend it um, as a growing experience. So And a way to make friends. Because I've made like some of my lifelong friends here. Not just from uni. Because during uni, I got a job. And at my job, I've made some really good friends. And I'm very, very grateful for that. The next one is, what are the qualities you look for in a friend? I probably look for um, loyalty is one big thing. Someone who is going to stick by me no matter what decision I make of my own life. Someone who I can have a laugh with and will will do things that both of us want to do. Um, not just what one of our person wants to do. Um, someone who is caring who I know I can rely on like if I need something I can go to um which is also someone I can just the main, main, main thing is loyalty trust um and someone who can literally just make me smile at the message I get if I get a message no I get a message from them that my face lights up no matter how even if it's a bad message I won't mind someone also I really look for people who can be honest with me as friends Honesty is a big thing because sometimes you're not honest with yourself and if your friend can be honest or you might do something so stupid or so you might say something and you think it's nothing but if they're gonna if they can't be honest that you had their feelings by accident so you can't be so I can't be friends with that because I don't want someone who's to slide off that I did something that actually hurt their feelings and then they just don't say anything to me because then it hurts me more because I'm like well then I don't know that I've hurt you and I have to sit back. Because also I'm an overthinker, so I always think, do I say something I hurt someone? So if you can't be honest, that's I with me, that I have said something so, like, that's hurt you. I will I, I overthink it, because I think maybe I have. And then, or I just don't understand, I'll get questions like, why can't they just tell me if that's it, if it makes sense. Um, next question is, how many boys have you kissed on the lips? Oh, that's a good question, I need to figure this out. I don't think I count on one hand because the first year I was just kicking guys and nights out. I'm gonna say it's not that bad compared to people. It's not really bad if you kiss like 50 people. I I had my first kiss at 21, so. But I'm gonna say like 12 or 13 people. It might be more, but I'm gonna say it's between like that. Um, some of them were friendship kisses or truth or dare kisses on my birthday. But I still count that as kissing on the lips because it was me and my housemate fully made out bearing mind he's gay. Okay, I've got two more questions for you guys. So, I don't know, mini special announcement. It's kind of not really a special announcement, but it's a mini special announcement. I don't know. Um, last question, not this question, second to last question is, is, will you stay in Portsmouth forever? So for you, those of you who don't know, I go to uni in Portsmouth. I live in Portsmouth. I am... Um, and I only had three months away from it very technically in the last year before I went out I came back because I could not be away from it. More like I couldn't live at home. But I don't know if I would live here forever. I like it here. And like some of my closest friends live in Portsmouth. Actually both of my closest friends live in Portsmouth. So like it was good. it would it's gonna be really hard to leave it, but like in June when my parents if this house runs out, I will be moving back home because unless I get offered a full-time job in Portsmouth which I will not be applying for in June when I'm still doing my final project for my master's because that's too much. I'm probably going to start applying for jobs around then but um, unless I get offered a job in Portsmouth I'm probably not going to live in Portsmouth forever. I would take a job, if I got offered a job, wherever I get offered a job I'll live closer to there. After doing uni I've really figured that I don't mind where I live as long as I can make friends 
and I'm pretty good at making friends, I think, now. Um, and I think it's personally just become, like, I, I don't want to live back home. I will go back home for when I move out of this house and I can move somewhere else, but I don't want to live in my hometown. Um, I don't really mind where I live, whether it's up north, in Portsmouth, down south, anywhere. Um, all I know is I will be coming back to visit Portsmouth as much as I can because whilst I'm still studying in June and I've moved back home, I'm hoping to still work for the weekends in Portsmouth. So I would have to commute every weekend. So I'll still be in Portsmouth for like every weekend until like I eventually get a job somewhere else um or unless i can get transferred to uh my uh, hollywood bowl near me so my nose is running like crazy but i don't think i'll be here forever sorry to all my friends here but i will not be in to forever i will i might move back at some point who knows but probably not and my final question is how is your masters well it's actually going really well. I'm really enjoying it. Like, I think I've never... So I've never written an essay in or cool piece of coursework during my uni degree and learned something whilst writing it. I'm usually just writing stuff for the sake of writing for my degree. Sorry. I wrote an essay that was due in yesterday and I learned so much in the last four days that I'm actually really enjoying it. Like, I actually want to be here and I actually want to do it. So it's definitely... One of the best things I have actually done. So, yeah, that's how my master's going. I'm loving it. I've made some great friends and I'm really enjoying it so far. So, hopefully, it will continue to be great over the next. How many months? Till next October. 11 months, I think. Um, 11, 10, 11 months, but yeah, anyway. So that's the end of the questions. My last thing to talk about is this mini special announcement, and it's basically I am bringing back a blog. I used to have a blog, if those of you didn't know, but I didn't like it, and I decided to start a complete, complete new one. And the web, the whole website is ready to go. I just need to write my first few blog posts, which I'm going to start working on today. I'm going to write the first blog post, and then hopefully by the time this video goes up, the blog will be up too. So please keep an eye on that. I'll put the link to this blog, hope the blog, in the description, hopefully down below. And without further ado, that is the end of the video. Finally, um, sorry for the change up in cameras from my camera to my phone. Again, like I said, my, my camera actually died. But if you did enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up. Please comment down below. Please subscribe. Please comment down below if you want any other videos. But like I said, I am sticking really with vlogs. And please find my social medias, and I will. See you again soon with another video or weekly vlog. Bye!